Welcome back to In Need of a Refill, where God's Word and the coffee are never in short supply. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on In Need of a Refill. If you have a comment or question or passage you want me to look at, leave in the section below. We'll get to it just as fast as we can. Let me start off by saying Happy Mother's Day. Ladies, I hope you have a great day. And gentlemen, if you haven't called your mamas, call your mama. <laughs> you know, but uh, just in case, let's pray together. Father God, thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for blessing our lives. We want to thank you because you love us and that you care for us each and every day. That You provide for us, Father. Help us to be good stewards of those things that you have provided for us. Father, please bless our time of study. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. You ever have one of those days or one of those weeks where it's a kind of a mixed bag? You know, you get a, some really good things and some really bad things. It's really good. Th you know, it's almost like you're uh, trying to ride over a hill or something. Well, last Thursday was kind of that way for me. Uh, I had to decide if I wanted to go to uh, Utah on Thursday or Friday. And I thought, well, I got stuff going on Friday. I really don't want to go Thursday's weather. Ooh, didn't look so hot. Now, I'm kind of a chicken when it comes to driving on the interstate in the snow. So I was like, eh, what do I do? Well, God bless the trip, number one. But here we go, you know, we get back, or I get back, I'm by myself. Uh, I'm on the Utah side, about five miles away. And I hit this ice storm that I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me, you know? I mean, I had to drop the, the miles from 80 miles an hour to like 60, 65, and I kid you not, I had a piece of ice on the windshield wipers literally that long, <laughs> you know? Thankfully, it didn't stick, but still, I had the windshield wipers on a full blast. Well, when I got over into the Evanston side, you know, I stopped for gas and did all that. And I was like, I do not want that storm catching up with me. So what I ended up doing was I just gassed up and just took off. Well, I ended up hitting, you know, good cells and bad cells along the way. Some were where you had to crank the windshield wipers all the way up. Some you could turn them all the way off. No big deal. Overall, it was an easy trip, except for those parts. You know, but what we see in things like that, we often see in scripture too. Now it's uh, not necessarily weather based, you know, although some of it is, I mean, the Sea of Galilee and, and bits like that, certainly. But what you see in the book of Luke, or book of Luke, I almost did the book of Luke on this one. This uh, miracle is one of the only things that is in all four gospels. Um, now, all four have a different focus on it, but uh, today we're going to be looking at the feeding of the 5,000, actually probably more like the feeding of the 10 to 12,000. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute, but uh, Mark 6 is where we're going to be taking the text. This is 30 through 32. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and they reported to him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away by yourselves. To a secluded place and rest a while. For there were many people coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. They went away in the boat to a secluded place by themselves. Okay, so what you've got here, this comes on the heels of two different things, okay? One good, one bad. Um, on the bad side, Matthew 14 talks about the beheading of John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin. So, you know, obviously bad side, you know, but um, this also comes on the heels of a limited commission. So the apostles are pumped up. They've had this great um, success. They come back and they're eager to tell Jesus all about this thing. Um, and then somebody brings news about the beheading of John. You know, it, it's one of those situations that 
you've got this extreme high, and then you hit rock bottom, okay? But uh, either way you go, everyone's exhausted. I mean, they're grieving, they're tired, you know, they, they've just had all the adrenaline just wiped out, which is its own little trick, but they need rest. And uh, with all these people that he mentions coming and going, they didn't even have time to get to grab grub. I mean, it's one of those situations up uh, Thursday, you know, uh, I get to Evanston and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to grab a burger or something on the way. Oh no, I ain't letting that storm catch up with me. So I, I was like, I'll eat when I get home. Well, I ate about six o'clock, but I got home about 3.15, but that's not the point. You know, so, but here, here's the case. I mean, they've gone from an extreme high to an extreme low. They're tired, they're hungry. They just want to be by themselves. So here's 33 and 34. The people saw them going and many recognized them and ran there together on foot from all the cities and got there ahead of them. When Jesus went to shore, he saw a large crowd and he felt compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. There were times in China where we just wanted to uh, spend some time alone. We first got to Wuhan back in 06 and uh, I had had a practice of taking JL occasionally to uh, breakfast. So we stopped at one of the street vendors, you know, we picked up breakfast, Tassie's in class, and we just grabbed a table, you know, and we're, we're enjoying breakfast. And then all of a sudden, a white guy in China, let me tell you, has a bullseye. Okay, not only do you not blend in, I felt sorry for uh, the albino Chinese, and I did see a few, and I'm like, oh boy, they must really have it bad. You know, but it was not only an inability for us to blend in, but people wanted to, and I quote, Practice their English. Yeah, that's what you got class for. Go to class. You know, uh, you know, it's basically one of those situations where you're not good for anything else. I'm going to practice my English on you. I don't care what you're doing. You can imagine how well that went over. I wasn't quite as. Uh, less tempered back then as I am now. Okay, so after about five minutes, literally, of trying to be nice to these guys, I finally said, get out, leave us alone. They finally got the point, you know, but it was one of those situations. I tried being nice, but here's the, th here's the deal. People are seeking Jesus out. They're seeking, well, not really seeking the apostles out. They're seeking Jesus out. The apostles are just collateral damage in a sense. You know, but here's the problem. There's no time to rest. There's no time to recharge. There's no time to debrief or whatever you want to call it where Jesus is going to let them talk about what has gone down in the limited commission. Nothing. People demanding their time right then, right now. I don't care what you were doing. I want to practice my English. You know, kind of thing. So it's one of those things they couldn't hardly get off the boat. That's why I put greeting quotations here. You know, they're there to greet them. Not exactly. They're there because they want something. It's like uh, being invited out to a dinner in China, you know it's not because they want to be friends. They want something. They either want you to teach their kid in the summer, or they want you to teach their kid right now, they want you to take an extra class or something. They'd never do it out of friendship. Now, you can invite your own friends out, sure. 
But we even had a case where we had our own friends, our own co-workers want something, so they invited us out. I'm like, wait a minute, hold up, you've been here too long. You're acting like these guys. You know, but here's the deal, these, these guys are there to greet them, but not really, you know, check and see how the trip went or, you know, how they're doing. Gimme, 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 kind of thing. Well, Jesus is incredible. I mean, that goes without saying, right? Jesus is incredible. How many of you would like, in the situation he's dealing with, to be accosted by a crowd? <clears throat> yeah, me neither. And yet, what you see is Jesus showing compassion on them. One of the Gospels has, it, has him teaching and healing. One of them has him teaching. You know, or more than one has him teaching. But either way you go, he's not saying, get out. He's not saying, okay, guys, let's turn around this boat and go back to the other side. Let, you know, let's get away. Not doing any of that. He's spending time with these people because they are like a sheep without a shepherd. They have no direction they have no one to take care of them. They have no leader, no real leader. So he wants to be that leader for them. He wants to be that shepherd like he wants to be the good shepherd for you and I. Through good times, through bad times. So here's what we get, 35 through 37. When it was already quite late, his disciples came to him and said, This place is desolate, and it is already <laughs> quite late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. That's the funny line right there. You know, but, uh, and they said to him, Shall we go and spend 200 denarii on bread and give them something to eat? <laughs> this is crazy. I mean, you know, put yourself in the apostles' sandals for a minute. They're ready to call it a night. Jesus put in some serious hours. Serious hours. There's more than one situation in the book of Mark where Jesus is working late into the night. And this is no different. He's working late into the night, you know, or at least into the evening. The apostles are ready to be done. It's um, one of those situations. They didn't expect any of this. Well, you know, we had times in China where I would get back from the other campus in Wuhan, and I knew there was a group waiting on me. I scheduled it. That was the only time we had to schedule it. Fine. I'll put the hours in. I don't care. Jesus did it. I'm going to try my best to do it too. But I tell you what, riding that bus over after a long day of teaching, I was like, oh boy. All right, let's do this. And I basically had to pull myself up by my bootstrap, so to speak, and, and get it done. There was no food until after they left, sometimes as late as 9 p.m. <laughs> Which was fine, you know, I really wasn't hungry at that point anyway. But still, they would end up being in there. I'd get home at 7, I'd walk in, drop the backpack, and let's go. Let's teach. What questions have you got? Kind of thing. You know, and it was exhausting. It really was. It was exhausting. So, you know, you can imagine what these guys are dealing with. Lord, it's late. Send them away. It's time to rest. It's time for food. We haven't eaten yet either, Lord. You know, kind of thing. Now, I mean, I'm reading that into it based on what we've already looked at, you know, that they hadn't had time to eat. But still, it's one of those situations that they're making some good points. I mean, it's not like, Lord, get them out of here. They're making some good points. You know, they're hungry. Send them away so they can get something to eat. It's late. It's late. You know, and okay. 
But that's when Jesus hits them with a wait what moment. You know, one of those situations that you're expecting a different answer. You're expecting the guy to say, absolutely. You know, you're right. It is late. Uh, guys, it's time to go. You give them something, huh? Uh, uh, excuse me? What? I mean, it's, it's one of those situations where, you know, you're sitting at this huge table with a bunch of folks, a bunch of dishes come out for food, and then all of a sudden, you've got the bill today, Paul. You know, it, it's one of those situations. Paul's not expecting to pay the bill. Wait, what? What do you mean I got the bill? It's kind of that situation. You give them some. Lord, we haven't even had time to go fishing. How do you expect me to feed all these people? Well, the book of John talks about him already knowing what he was going to do, that he was testing, I believe it was Philip. You know, but either way you go, 200 denarii wouldn't be enough to buy the food. Now, if my math is right, you know, the denarii was a one-day wage. So you're looking at um, about 54% of a year's salary. Lord, even if we spent over half the year's salary, we couldn't feed all these folk. That's a lot of folk, but still, I mean, we're not talking about cold cuts here. And even then that's expensive. And he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go look. And when they found out, they said, pot and two fish. Let's stop there for just a moment. Five and two fish. Lord, we ain't got enough. I mean, we can barely feed, you know, one to two people. Now, more than likely, it says in other gospels that a young boy was the one that had these items. Somebody's mama took care of him. She was not expecting, I can almost guarantee, what was about to go down. You know, so... It was one of those situations, five and two fish. I'm looking at it and thinking five loaves figure eh, maybe like so, maybe. I could probably put away at least three of those myself when I'm not hungry. So, you know, it's like, what? But still. And he commanded them all to sit down by groups on the green grass they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties, and he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up toward heaven, he blessed the food and broke the loaves, and he kept giving them to the disciples to set before them, and he divided up the two fish among them all. So he wants to know what's available. What do we got? Now he already knew. You know, I mean, he could make something out of nothing. I mean, he pretty much does anyway with the five and two. But still, he wants to know what's available. More than likely, this is for the disciples. I mean, more than likely, hey, guys, go check it out because I'm about to do something cool. So he might want them to take inventory just so they know for sure. Oh yeah, Jesus wasn't hiding something up his sleeve. He's not this magician that's gonna pull the rabbit out of the hat, so to speak. You know, but uh, he wants the crowd to sit down. I mean, we're not talking about, okay, everybody get in the line. We're going to go through the drive-through kind of thing. You know, I mean, it's not like get your food and get out of here kind of thing. He wants them to stick around. Now, it's already late. And um, as many people as Mark tells us was there, we'll get to that in a bit, but as many as he tells us was there, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while just to get seated in groups of hundreds and fifties. But passing the food out, that's going to take a while. Eating is going to take a while. So at this point, they're going to be working real late. Okay, so he does bless the food. Now, you know, 
Maybe this is uh, an example that we need to follow where we bless the food before we eat. Maybe this is just his practice, but whatever the case is, he does bless the food. And then he starts telling them to pa pass the stuff out. Five and two fish. We got three on the front row here and, uh, you know, two in the row behind them. So, I mean, that's what, a low feed, uh, figure two fish, and sorry, Diane, you're not going to get anything to eat. You know, uh, Christina and Connie were sitting right there ahead of you, so, you know, but, so, I mean, that's it, right? But then the disciples just keep passing, keep passing, keep passing, keep taking the stuff out. It's like, wait, Lord, where's all this coming from? What's going on here? You know, but it's like, the miracle is a twofold miracle. It's for the crowd, for sure. I mean, you know, they get to eat. They know Jesus just got off the boat. They met him there. They know they didn't pull the fish off the boat. They met him there. So it's one of those, man, he fed all these people. Man, I got to eat until I was full. What's going on here? But it's also for the disciples. I mean, they bear witness in a special way to the food <laughs> not running out. I mean, they're having to be uh, the, waiter, the waiters here, you know, carrying the food out to everybody. So it, it's a special way to say, hey, look at what's going on here. Are we not done yet? Are we not done yet? Wow. Uh, what, what do you mean you still got more? Okay. They all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up 12 baskets, broken pieces, and also of the fish. There were 5,000 men who ate the loaves. I'm sorry. Okay, they all ate. Five and two fish. There's going to be crumbs, if that. And it's certainly not going to feed everybody. I mean, we've already said, Diane, don't get to eat. You know, so it's like... What's going on here? And they're picking up broken pieces. We're not talking about, you know, crumbs on the floor. We're talking about broken pieces, enough for 12 baskets. 12 baskets. That's incredible. I mean, I don't have the words to say just how incredible this actually is. Because we're actually looking at not children. We're looking at full grown men that Mark is commenting on. Okay, 5,000 full grown men. We're not talking about Bobby Joe, who can't hardly eat half of that. You know, we're not talking about Callum who can't eat one loaf by himself. We're talking more like me, talking more like Heath, talking more like Paul. You know, the fact that it's like, bring on the grub, man. I'm hungry. It's late. I haven't eaten all day. And how do I know it's men? That's the word they use. You know, not in English, in Greek. It, there are two different words, one for man, male and one for man uh, mankind and they use the word for male so really what you're looking at is probably closer to 12,000 people because generally you'd have a two two to one ratio women to men and the women aren't going to leave their kids at home they're going to go listen to the rabbi they're going to go watch the cool stuff the rabbi's about to do so more than likely, you're looking at 12, maybe even up to 15. But either way, it's a lot more than two, lo or, uh, two fish and five loaves should feed. So what they say after this is all said and done, if you look at the John account, these people are ready to make Jesus King, I mean, this is 614 in John. Therefore, when the people saw the sign which he had performed, 
They said, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. And the next verse talks about, hey, let's make him king. They're looking for the prophet like Moses from Deuteronomy. And they see this happen, and oh, buddy, that's got to be him. That's got to be him. And they're right. I mean, it is him. But they want to make him king, but not in the way that God was looking to establish his rule through the Messiah. So in the midst of a crisis, in the midst of a crisis, Jesus showed compassion. How are we doing on that? I mean, a crisis hits and are we more than willing to say, hey, come on in here, let me take care of you. Or are we more like, uh, this is our time now, I'm sorry, but uh, there's, uh, there's stuff going on, you need to leave. Which one are we? And I'll tell you, on my good days, I don't measure up still. On my bad days, I lock the door and I, I put the horse right in front of the door. You know? So good luck getting in. But, uh, you know, Jesus wants to be the good shepherd for these people. He wants to be that shepherd, the one taking care of them. Because they're lost. He wants to be our good shepherd because we need him. We need his guidance. We need his direction. We need his constant cleansing that his blood offers. He wants to be our shepherd too. Are we trying to do this on our own? Are we trying to do this simply as a group? Because if we're trying to do this as a group without him, even with all of our collective talents that God gave, we lose. We lose. We can't do this on our own. It's foolish to think we can. But the other thing, Jesus can do some amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. You know, no matter what the situation is, I can guarantee you, that the, the text does not say, but I can guarantee you when they got into that boat, the disciples were not thinking, hey, this is going to be a long night. We're going to have to feed 5,000 plus. No way. No way. Now, probably when they were getting ready to get off the boat, they're like, oh my goodness, what's going on here? But still, you know, Jesus worked for nothing. Nothing. That should tell us something. Among other things, that means that Jesus can supply for us no matter what the situation may be. Now, does it mean miraculous? Doubtful. Possible? Doubtful. More than likely, what it means for us is working through someone else to help us, or at least giving us the strength and the ability to do what needs to be done. But still, it's him supplying what we need, no matter what the situation is, no matter how bad we have it at the time. There's no need to try to do this on our own. We can't. He can. Let's rely on him. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on In Need of a Refill. And remember, if you're ever in need of a refill on God's Word, all we have to do is take it off our shelves. Spend some time with Him. We won't regret it. Have a blessed week.